Well, first of all, it's a great pleasure to speak to you today. I wish I could be with you in person, but we can do it like this now. I, let me share some thoughts about spiritual experience and science. First of all, of course, we have to, a great task is before us in looking at spiritual experience in the context of science. Usually, in today's world, skeptics and so-called realists dismiss spiritual experiences as mere imagination. The science on the basis of which they operate does not tolerate spiritual experiences. Let me uh, just characterize spiritual experiences to see why. I call, and I think this is a standard definition, spiritual experiences, the kind of experiences that are not rational, not easily verbalized, do not occur in ordinary states of consciousness, and they are somehow ineffable, and they can be extremely meaningful. And another factor is that they are spontaneous. They come not being, without being invited, they happen. And these experiences usually leave a mark on the experiencers so that they feel that something important has happened. They have got some important insights. Now to dismiss these as being mere imagination is only valid, is only possible if you operate on a very strict old fashioned classical Newtonian framework in which only matter and energy is real and the whole world consists of the motion of matter in space and time. And therefore, only the motion of or the movement or the function of neurons in the brain can be real. And these neurons are such that they generate experiences. Now, they can, every, everything that they emerges in our mind, in our consciousness, must have passed through the brain in such a way that the brain, the neurons, the, the network of neurons in the brain has produced them. So if spontaneous experiences come about that surpass the limits of the ordinary perceived events in space and time, then those cannot be real. Now, we have to go beyond this classical notion. Think of the new sciences, the quantum disciplines. Some of the characteristics of the quantum concept of the world, of reality, including the quantum concept of experience, is such that there are no boundaries along the classical lines of space and time. The interconnections are constant, interconnections are universal, and all things affect all other things. Events that happened at one time also penetrate elsewhere. There is a, a, a constant sense of being involved, being connected to the rest of the world. This may not be conscious, this is a scientific thesis, but it is an, an element of the new sciences, of the quantum disciplines that we have uh, in, um, immersed in space and time in such a way that we are instantly connected to all, the th all other things. Now, the information that we can get, get in the context of such immediate connections is not limited. It can be from any time, from anywhere. And this can include experiences that go beyond what is being perceived as bona fide element of experience produced by the workings of the brain. The brain, the nervous system, the body, in the new context, can be a transmitter and not only a producer of, of experiences. We could transmit things, information that occurs, that takes place in the, in the world around us, so that some of this information reaches consciousness. This, is, uh, this would validate 
at least allow the perception of spiritual experiences as not merely fantasy, delusion, but as real experiences. Some experiences of something that happens in the world. Now we can ask ourselves, what would be the meaning of such experiences? What could we convey? I think the answer that we get reached to, that we can convey something important, something elemental about the world around us. And why is that? Think of the following. We know that the world that we measure, that we observe, even with scientific means, is complex. In fact, it has come to, it's come to light that the complexity of this world is such that it would be impossible that it would have been produced purely by random interactions, not just things that happen and interact with other things without any, any higher, uh, higher purpose or direction, purely randomly. But this random interaction has been a main tenet of, of physics and of science until the advent of the quantum disciplines. It's held that random interactions have produced all the phenomena on the world, all the structures, all the events that happen. Nothing is directing them. There is no source that would direct or govern or create. Everything just happens purely by chance. This has turned out to be impossible. And this is a recent discovery because when we start computing, the complexity, even of a simple, simple organism, a fruit fly, it turns out that the DNA of that organism is so complex that to bring it about by purely by random interactions among the elements, among the atoms, the molecules that create the DNA, even if that would only take, go very fast, reasonably fast, it would probably exceed the age the limits of the, of the age of the universe. It's impossible, according to this new insight, that the world would be produced purely by random interactions. So it seems that the world is produced by, by an impetus, by what Alfred North Whitehead, the philosopher, called a lure, an inclination, a, a, a kind of a, 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 a a sense that there is more to the randomness in the world. If that something more is such that it creates, it, or it allows the creation of the complex systems that exist in the world. Now, this kind of loop, this kind of in, uh, sudden deep impetus is spontaneous. It is present, and if it is present in or consciousness, it is not the product of rational thinking, of computation. It is something that, that is deeply given in, in the depths of our experience in what Weisshead himself called a feeling, a feeling of the world. Deep down, we can feel that the world is more than randomness, that there is more to it than the chance interaction of things. And spiritual experiences, when they are, given that they are spontaneous, they convey something of that, something more, something which is there, which is beyond pure chance, which allows complex, coherent systems to come about in the world. This lure to our wholeness, to our system, systemic structure, is present already in the fact that there are three quarks create a proton, that the proton and the neutron creates an atomic nucleus, and electrons as associated with that nucleus, and that all these together form a stable or semi-stable atom, and atoms are the basis of molecules, molecules are the basis of crystals and macromolecules, and eventually of life and of solar systems and galaxies. The world is proceeding along 
structured lines, we call it evolution. Now this basic structure, this leaf structure, which creates the world that we observe, is informing our brain, our mind, our consciousness. But it's not evident in everyday experience. Everyday experience gives us only what is immediately in front of our eyes and ears and other sensory organs. These deeper things, these deeper experiences come to the fore when concerned, when our concern with everyday experience is overridden by something, uh, is allowed to come to the, to the fore. It calls for a slightly or perhaps deeply altered state of consciousness. An operation of the brain below the ordinary level of, of delta or, or, or beta rather, going down to theta and down all the way to delta. It's possible to have experiences in these leap levels of the EEG and spiritual experiences appear to come, to come about, to be created, to happen in these deeper states of consciousness. These experiences are experiences of the formative impulse acting on the world. The information spelled with a hyphen that David Bohm, quantum physicist, was talking, was talking about when he said that the implicate order acts on the explicate order, what we perceive and create the world around us. I take this seriously. I think this is an this is information is present in the world. It creates the world beyond chance. And that same impulse, that same creative impetus, the Elan Vital that Henry only Bergson was talking, talking about, the etheric force that force that Rudolf Steiner was talking about. This same impetus is present. In, in our in spiritual experiences. To make it short and to conclude, to my mind, spiritual experiences are experiences of the interconnection of the structure in the world. They come about because in these experiences our ordinary concern with our immediate needs and wants, with our immediate perceptions is suspended. We are allowed to look at to feel, to sense something that is happening deeper in our psyche, deeper in our consciousness. And this something deeper includes the formative impulse, impulse that creates the world beyond chance. We can sense this when we feel our oneness, when we feel our belongingness, when we feel our connection with others, spiritual experiences, it is those that I'm familiar with are ending and usually concluding with a very deep sense of belonging. That these experiences themselves trace in terms of love, a feeling of love, a feeling of oneness with the world around us. This must be the same sense that the proton feels regarding the uterum, to, to put it somewhat metaphorical ways, is the sense that is there in the world that creates the world beyond chance. And spiritual experiences give us that deep sense. It's very important to recognize how we feel and what we feel in these experiences. Not to dismiss them simply as mere delusions, but to look at them as something which conveys something important, something essential about the world around us. This is not a chance produced world, an experience is not merely one something that is produced by the, by the brain. The, our brain, our nervous system, are sensitive instruments that transmit, perceive and transmit uh, the, the, the events, the happenings, the information that is there in the world. And the great lessons to learn is that we are sensitive beings, we are beings who perceive the world around us on multiple dimensions. The deeper dimension is masked over by the surface dimensions in everyday experiences. In, in those deep experiences of meditation, 
of aesthetic enjoyment, of feelings of love and belongingness. In these experiences, we are connected to the deeper formative principle in, in, in the universe. The principle that creates the world as a structured whole and not merely as a mass, as a heap of, of, of indifferentiated particles and or gases. This is a highly structured, coherent world. The coherence is masked by our everyday experience, but it comes through, it comes, it comes through in spiritual experiences. We probably all have spiritual experiences. They occur, they occur sometimes in this semi-waking state between sleep and awareness. Sometimes they occur in deep meditation. Sometimes they occur in prayer. In so many times they occur. The everyday common sense dismisses them. We have to recover the sense that experiences like this tell us something about the world and about our own essential being. Because if the world is oriented toward creating whole systems, creating beyond chance, creating coherent systems, then we are such a system ourselves. We have come about and we can express, we literally embody this impetus in the world. Let me just conclude to say, the new sciences tell us that we are not little bits of matter moving without rhyme or reason, without purpose in space and time. We are all part of an interconnected whole, that's a structured whole, a systemic whole, a whole that has information, and we can access that information in those deep-seated experiences that we call spiritual experiences. My recommendation is to go into ourselves, find these roots of these experiences, because we, will be co we are connected to the world through these experiences on deeper levels, and we become better beings. Become, we become more connected, more aligned with the world than by, uh, by being, by, than by considering that we are separate, independently, or chance-oriented beings moving, happening in space and time. We are part of the universe. We are part of the formative impulse of the universe. And that discovery can make us better beings and make the world a better world. Thank you so much for your kind attention. Of